Well, um, you know, uh, uh, if you, that depends from the angle with we, from which you look at. When uh, Germany was uh, going to attack Czechoslovakia in 1938, Neville Chamberlain, then the Prime Minister of the UK, said, why we should care about Czechoslovakia? It's a faraway country of which we know very little. I don't want these words to apply to Georgia now, because Czechoslovakia in 1938 was struggling democracy. Georgia is a struggling democracy as well. Georgia was part of the Soviet Union. We were occupied by Bolshevik Russia almost 100 years ago, exactly in the similar circumstances. They claimed to protect some minority here, came in, and we went, we went through 70 years of communist slavery and, 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 and basically the mud of the communist society. We emerged from that to build a new country, country that was, you are right, initially very corrupt, very inefficient. Now we, are, we were, one, until now, one of the fastest growing economy in the region. We were getting the highest per capita rate of foreign investment. Why? Because we became one of three most non-corrupt countries in Europe, according to the European Bank. We became one of the top fighters, one of the top uh, governance places, according to the World Bank. We became, we, we became one of the top business climate destinations ahead of many uh, much well-known uh, big economies. So Georgia has really done this political transformation. We moved from society with, our, with all lawlessness and corruption to the society of rule of law and the society where there is freedom but there is also responsibility. W so the point here is Russia is controlled by the people who are coming from KGB background. They, the one thing they hate most of all in the world is freedom. And of course, they hate most of all nations that want to be free. Georgia was jewel of the empire. It's the most beautiful country among former Soviet states. And they think that the Georgia should belong to them. And what happened that this Georgia that has no oil and gas like they have suddenly defied their rule and said, look, we don't have oil and gas, but we have freedom and we have rule of law. And you know what? Russian tanks were rolling into Georgia yesterday. And what we did, we, we staged huge rally in downtown Tbilisi. People came out. We had biggest ever number of people waving Georgian flags and singing Georgian anthem. Democracies, they, they fight among each other, the politicians. But when the real struggle comes, people don't, do consolidate. Unlike Russia, where there is war propaganda, basically, or media, we have free media, we have free society. What's at stake here? You know, we are not a pro-American country. I mean, I will, last time we discussed, I, 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 I read from time to time the Federalist Papers. I, of course, I am big admirer of founding fathers. I myself went to Columbia Law School and George Washington University in America. I practiced law in New York. One thing I learned from America, not to be a pro-American, we are not pro-American, but some journalists sat here, you know, you, we are building America. We, we are building basic society based on the same values as America. And what we always thought, that those values are worthless unless the free world can stand up for that. If small country is being butchered just for the desire of to being free. If we were being butchered for the fact that we want to be close to the United States. You know the bombs, they've been throwing on our people, killing hundreds of civilians for the last few days. I'm afraid to say thousands, but hundreds at least. I hope it will not be thousands. You know, it will not be thousands. You know, they had inscription on them. This is for America. This is for NATO. This is for Bush. I told President Bush about it today, by the way. So it's all, Russians are fighting war not with us at this stage. They are fighting right. war with the idea. They want to Mr. kill idea of freedom. And by proxy, they, they imagine they fight war with the, EU, the United States. Um, Mr. President, first of all, Americans, if you didn't see the HBO special on John Adams, I think there was a speech very similar to what you just heard when the Americans were making their case to the rest of the world. Um, um, our president said he looked into the eyes of Vladimir Putin and he saw a friend. Uh, John McCain said he looked into the eyes of Vladimir Putin and sees KGB. I believe Vladimir Putin is KGB. It has, nothing's changed. The evil empire is back. Would you say, sir, that Vladimir Putin and the evil empire is, is that it, and that it is back? Well, Glenn, you know, you should ask about it, the families, and I'll be going tomorrow to the funerals. You know, they've been living in their residential areas. They didn't expect anything, and bombs started to fall on them. And the Russian missiles started to be fired at them. And I don't know what else it is, but if not, it is, if not it's an evil. And uh, I don't know whether it's an empire and just evil persons doing that. History will judge very badly the poor the people who, who perpetrate all these crimes for the last several days. Uh, George Bush made 
brilliant statement today uh, in, uh, in, the, in the afternoon. I spoke to him. He, he told me he, wouldn't, he wasn't sleeping for the last several days. Well, you, men you mentioned Senator McCain. Senator McCain, as well as Senator Obama, made strong statements to, in support of Georgia. Senator McCain said yesterday, we, are all, we Americans are all Georgians now. And you know what? Maybe these words of solidarity somehow sometimes count more than even than, you know, planes or rifles America can send us. Because the point here is that you are dealing with monstrous machine. And that machine is rolling. They don't care about human lives. They, they get, get, get kicked out of the fact that they cause mass destruction. They burn everything on their, on their way. We've seen it firsthand these days. But one thing they are really afraid of is international exposure. One thing they are really afraid of is that, you know, for, there are also other peoples in the world who understand what they are doing. So they are relying on lies. You know, when Poland was attacked by Germany in 1939, Germany said Poland attacked Germany, on the contrary. When Finland was attacked by the Soviet Union, Stalin claimed that Finland attacked the Soviet Union. They claimed that, uh, Czech, uh, that, uh, that Czechoslovakia in 1968 provoked them. That's why they went into tanks. This time, these people went out to the world and said, look, Georgia invaded us. Georgia is committing ethnic cleansing. So we have to react to Georgia. So basically, Russia is exercising self-defense inside, deep inside Georgian territory and killing our, my people because we attacked somebody. This is, the, you are dealing with system where, you know, with doublespeak, Newsweek, very Orwellian. I mean, you are dealing with people for whom the lies, lying is instrument of communication. And evil is the normal way to operate it. And you know, we've seen this, we looked into the eyes of this evil. But the wonderful thing about democracy and freedom is, you know, they try to scare people. This city was bombed for the first time in, its, in, in the history. And you know, there were bombs falling in different parts of the city. L less extensive than in other parts of Georgia, but even capital was bombed. And you know, you still look around, people go around. There are lights on, people, uh, there are no lines for gas stations, people are organized, mobilized, because that's how democracies are. We, people, we cannot call people to go out and, you know, jump under tanks because that would be, that would not help. Tanks would roll over them. Those who send those tanks don't care about human lives. Sir. However, those people who live normal lives despite bombings is the worst uh, response for them who are perpetrating the crime. But what else is at stake for America here? It's the issue of freedom. America, for us, is a symbol of freedom worldwide. You know, I grew up with ideals that America, I grew up in Soviet communist society till the age of 20. I know, I, for me, from my old, only childhood, America was a dreamland. America was a place from which all the bright ideas came. America was the place which was great inspiration for, for me till, since my childhood. And, you know, and then when the uh, Soviet Union collapsed, when the Cold War was over, when I went to study in the U.S., and finally I realized my dream, I never thought that this evil would come back again. I never thought that KGB people would again try to run the world. And that's exactly what's happening now. This is worst nightmare coming true, and what's at stake here is America's, America's ideals. If right. freedom collapses Mi in Georgia, it will collapse in Baltic countries, in, in other places as well. Mr. President, back with final thoughts from you in just a second from Georgia after the break.